End of Casino 1. I'm going to hydrate. That means it's the start of Casino 2. But before we get started, man, and it, I'm going to put this in the VOD. If somebody said any r slash subway anecdotes, man, like, I, I know I tweeted it, but I was on r slash subway trying to see how people felt about the eat fresh refresh. Um, and, and this order blew my mind. So this, there was a thread called, like, what's your average subway order? This is what this uh, insane person said. Spicy Italian sandwich, extra provolone cheese, toasted Italian herbs and cheese bread. Not, not crazy so far. Extra cheese seems pretty normal. Then, here's where it gets crazy. Extra lettuce, extra tomato, extra pickles, extra green peppers, extra banana peppers, extra jalapenos, extra onions, oregano, extra black pepper. I get it to go and add spicy mustard at home. I... There's so much of this that I'm like, I'm just laughing because literally this guy took like the strongest flavor toppings of all time. You know, like extra tomato. That thing's juicy as heck. Extra pickles. is They're salt bombs. Extra banana peppers. So salty, so spicy. I love them, by the way. Extra jalapenos. So salty, so sour because uh, they're the, fer the fermented ones or the pickled ones. And then he, he, he took one bite and said, you know what would really bring this sandwich together? Just the standard amount of oregano. I don't want extra oregano. Are you crazy? That would overpower the flavor of the quarter pound of jalapenos and banana peppers that I have on this thing. If you could just add like a pinch of oregano, that would really tie this sandwich together in my opinion. Not eggs, are you crazy? Regular amounts of oregano. I, I almost, I, I, I have to admire, by the way, as we get ready for the run. Regular Magdalene, Moss Rush, Moss Rush? Boss Rush, True Mom. Okay. I have to admire the, um, the conviction, and, and I mean this sincerely. I have to admire the conviction of somebody um, that goes home, opens their Subway sandwich, and then puts another topping on it. Because, like, that, as soon as I get the Subway sandwich, that's how it's go as is, is how it's going into my body as well. <laughs> There's nothing, uh, I'm not making any alterations to that. Yeah, it was regular, Maggie. I'm not making any alterations to that sandwich uh, after I get home. So, and, and I'm not saying they're like not in the right, by the way. I'm just saying that's how I know that they believe what they're doing is like the best. What's your Subway order? I'm like, uh, depends. Foot long, foot long turkey on multigrain because they don't have uh, wheat anymore. They've replaced it with multigrain. Um, and when I order a foot of sandwich, I want to make sure it's on a, the most whole grain bread possible to save me those, like, seven calories. Um, cheese and toasted, you don't even got an axe. That's a gimme. Anybody who's going there not getting it toasted, I'd love to hear a good reason. Maybe there's a couple of sandwiches for which it doesn't really work, but, um, after that, I'll take a, I'll take a lettuce, red onion. I try to get, like, one, one pickled topping, one fermented topping, or one, one pickled, one spicy, I should say, so you're looking at like, uh, give me pickles, um, and banana peppers, because the jalapenos, I don't know, there's something about the, the spicy, uh, or the, the pickled jalapenos that, for me, they don't work as well on a sandwich, but I'm not, you know, I'll defend to the death, you're right to do it for yourself, and then I'll get like a, uh, you know, sometimes like a, a I, I can tell that this is rare, but sometimes I get uh, uh, oh my god, sometimes I get a a regular mustard, just yellow mustard. Nine times out of ten, they reach for the smoky honey mustard, which tells me that I'm one of the very few still keeping the old ways alive. I'm, I'm one of the very few individuals out there that, given the choice between a, a, a smoky honey mustard and a, an original yellow mustard, I can go with the yellow mustard from time to time. I like it. So, different, different strokes for different folks, man. 
the happy few. Exactly. We, we, we few. We happy few. <clears throat> Did you see Chipotle Southwest and Rancher going away? Uh, I didn't, but I also don't, um, I don't, I don't get those. I'm a simple man. I, I, it sucks for, uh, for mouth though. Meatball mar marinara with Chipotle Southwest sauce. What's he going to do? Well, he's probably still maintaining his Subway boycott, but... I mean, I'm not going to say, like, Subway doesn't suck. <laughs> it's... It, it, it kind of sucks. But I like it. I don't know what it is, but it, you know, it, it, it hits the spot. Uh, on occasion, maybe like once every three weeks or something like that. I also... Subway... r slash Subway is up in arms, by the way, because due to a supply chain pinch... Apparently, the cold cuts and the cold cut combos used to be delivered, uh, layered as they get presented on the sandwich, which saves uh, a lot of prep time in the restaurant. Whereas now, a number of locations are actually just getting like huge freaking logs of bologna and salami and stuff, and then they have to slice it themselves. Which you might be saying like, oh, boo-hoo, boo-hoo, but like, you know, these are people, they're not working at Subway because they're trying to get their like cooking career off the ground you know they're they're working there it's a, a job that they they're doing i'm not saying they're doing it because it has a lack of responsibility but you know they they have orders that they have to push out anything that adds to the prep time is like a little crazy i think if you wanted the uh, you know the cheapest sandwich money could buy you you kind of accept that some of the corners are going to get cut on the way up i guess is like after after phrasing it in the worst way possible that's my point <laughs> it's basically you get you get what you pay for, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Won't it be fresher if it's ready sliced? Yeah, but it's like it, it's annoying for the staff, you know. They are round meats as well. We do 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 do. It's not anti-worker rhetoric at all. Like if you have no media literacy, you know, that's your own problem to struggle with. It's actually, like, literally the exact opposite. Okay. Uh, give me some brimstone here. Give me some brimstone. Ooh, you know what? You could get funky with this, man. You can get funky with this. Why not? Let's let's go insane. Don't you, don't you know I'm Loki? I think that this is good for eddy room potential. Keep in mind, we do have to get the key, the knife pieces. We're not, oh, we are gonna lose our bone heart. My mistake. No Brother Bobby. Brother Bobby is uh, not good. I don't know who you've been watching that's been like lying to you. Brother Bobby is a, uh, kind of a piece of crap. Kind of, kind of garbage. Ooh, you're supposed to save that. Um, <laughs> What's next? Hold on. Excuse me, okay. 100% chance for troll bombs. This is fine. Get the troll bombs, don't get hit. Step on this and then run. Take this, see where it strikes you. Ooh! <laughs> that could have been a little, a little dangerous. That, that'll get your blood pumping on uh, an uh, early post-vacation situation. <laughs> oh, man. hoo <laughs> hoo I know it was you. Okay, so we got full health. We can use that on the next floor. Save Yom Hearts for the future so that you're ready to go on the next floor. Do we know this pill? They, w they wouldn't let us know, I think, in advance. I think, they, I think they changed that. You know what? We can save our full health pill now. I do. <laughs> so I'm working. Whenever I get my my voice gets a little husky because I had like terrible sleep for four days in a row or something like that. Um. Then I can do a pretty good Al Pacino. Cause she had a great ass, and your head was all the way up it. Something like that. Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. I've got yum heart and it's funny and I feel like yum heart you. Okay, um, really like sensible room here. 
My, my bad, I didn't get an uh, all stats upgrade in the first two floors. What a room. <clears throat> Please, I'm crying. <laughs> hey, if you don't have media literacy, that's your own problem, okay? Thank you. I have no idea what the goal is. Uh, we're going, it's regular Maggie, Boss Rush, Uber Mom. So it's it's a bit spiced. It's not a, it's not a simple life. You guys know that song? It goes up. Uh, what a beautiful life. What a beautiful life. You know this one? What a beautiful life. What a beautiful life. What a beautiful. That's a good. You don't know that song, dude? It was like number forty-one on Pitchfork's best songs of two thousand seven. You don't have that playlist? Are there other lyrics than that? I think there is, at the midway point of the song, um, I believe that the, the sampled artist goes, I can feel it, I can feel it, come with some down. And then they go back to, what a beautiful, it's a good song, man. You should check it out. NL sent me, looking forward to the comments on Gui Barato's What a Beautiful Life. Eggman sent me, whoa, Eggman based? I thought he only listens to Steely Dan. First off, thank you. Secondly, shut the hell up. Steely Dan is also based. Just because you, you don't have enough media literacy to understand it, don't hold that against me. Or against Steely Dan. It's a JoJo reference. I watched uh, some anime this weekend, by the way. I did. I watched the last... Um, I would say the last four minutes of uh, an episode of a show called Assassination Classroom. Kate was watching it. Um, I had no idea what was happening. There was a big yellow guy uh, and then like a 12 year old kid wearing a suit pretending to be a badass. And then I said, oh, it's Assassination Classroom. Kate said, oh my God, how did you know that? And I said, um, because at the end of the episode, that girl said, this and more happens in our assassination classroom. <laughs> and as a... Oh, my deal. You're losing me, my jury. You guys see Runaway Jury? Gene Hackman, John Cusack, Rachel Weisz, Dustin Hoffman. That's a movie, man. Great movie. You're losing me, my jury! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. They do say that, though. Good mo mm, Probably my favorite movie based on a John Grisham novel. I mean, you got The the Firm. Ten Things I Hate About You, Romeo and Juliet. Pelican Brief? I haven't seen it. I'm more of a... I, I'd love to see a movie called The Pelican Boxer, though. I'll tell you that much. Wouldn't that be something? Guy who fights birds? Man, what will they think of next? Uh, I don't know, I don't think I'm gonna fight the boss. These rooms kinda suck. We do have some sweet bomb setups, but... I thought Romeo and Juliet is Shakespeare. Mm, it's, I, I hear that a lot. There must be like a Berenstein Bears sort of thing. I'm pretty sure that it's a John Grisham. I think I saw it in the grocery store. That is a, a grocery store novel. Did you see the 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 Berenstein Bears uh, posts today? I only see these as I like half of the tweets that I see these days are just like best of bad subreddits. That was like, um, am I in? This was their quote, not mine, by the way. I have a memory of America dropping a nuclear bomb on Yugoslavia. And then the, the post was just like, I had distinctly, vividly remember as a kid picking up a newspaper and then reading that America dropped a bomb on Yugoslavia. And then I get older, I try to like look it up. Turns out it never happened. And also there's no country called Yugoslavia. What's going on? 
I would, if, if these posts are serious, I would love to just want to, like, live in their life for a day, you know? They, you think they get stopped at, like, traffic lights, and they're like, Whoa, dude! The light was red, and then I looked away, and then I looked back, and it's green now? What is going on, dude? Okay, we gotta go faster to get the boss rush, by the way, but... If we walk into the... Uh, into the white fire, can we fly again? Oh, we'll never get it back. Yeah, don't do that. I guess we'll just say no boss rush. Or, sorry, no shop, no item room on this floor. You'll turn back after clearing one more room. All right. If that's a doubter-based comment, then... Then you got me. Otherwise, I guess we'll just try to win the run as the lost. Hey, I'm just looking for a single key. <laughs> Remember, we got 25 minutes. Well, it's not gonna be there. Are you aware of the new phenomenon between zoomers called shifting? Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. Uh, I'm not. What? What is this? Don't don't listen to it. Don't. Okay, never mind. Well, is it bad because it's regrettable, or is it bad because it's like legitimately sensitive? It's reality shifting. You know, uh, I'm gonna leave. It's a new name. Are, wait a minute. Are we just gonna die when we go down to the next floor because of <laughs> because of blood sacrifice or whatever the heck this is called? My points. I don't need. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm reading <laughs> or what I'm reading here. It's just lucid dreaming. Okay. What? Look, can I can I tell you something that again is going to give me like a lot of uh, a lot of based comments? I don't worry myself too much about like what the teenagers are up to, you know. When I'm still the lost, by the way. You freaking liars! They're they're teenagers, you know. They're they're gonna get up to. They're gonna get up to some funky stuff, you know? They're, when I was, I told you when I was a kid, you know, like, I, I consider myself... Oh, we're back, baby. Um, I consider myself, like, you know, reasonably intelligent and, you know, I, I tried to think critically. But also, when I was, like, 14, my parents went to the grocery store and I was like, Alright, time to put on those binaural beats that get you high. I, I told you then there was the one that was, like, the backhand of God that was, like, this... Listening to these binaural beats is like taking PCP, heroin, and LSD simultaneously. And I listened to like 10 seconds of it and then got, I thought I felt something and I got so scared that I had to... <laughs> that I turned it off. We gotta be a little careful here. Like, we, we might not make boss rush, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try. But we also need to strengthen ourselves. So, like, you know, I can imagine, like, if somebody was, like, 30 years old or something like that, and then they were like, you know, kids these days are listening to binaural beats. I'd be like, well, you know, yeah, I'm a, I'm a kid, dude. I don't, this is why, like, I can't vote, okay? I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't, I don't know, I don't know anything about the real world. I'm still figuring that stuff out right now. So, yeah, maybe we're doing, your thoughts shape your reality? Sure, whatever, man. I'm, I'll even take it a step further, like, you know... I, I obviously, like, don't believe in the efficacy of astrology. And don't even give me... This is gross, by the way, but this is like a month ago. I was reading online. There was, like, a tweet that went viral that was, like, my, my girl just... And this was, like, from a woman, but it was, like, my girl just texted me and said, Oh, she just had period... This is so gross. <laughs> I'm sorry. She just had period sex with a guy, and she's worried that he won't call her back. Like, sis, you're never gonna be able to get rid of him. 
And I was like, what the, What are they talking about? And then in the, in the comments, it was like, oh, you don't know? Like, if you... Uh, if it's a full moon and you have period sex with a man, it's a spell to blood bond with him or something like that. Like he's, and then so many people were like leaving comments that were like, I did this four years ago and the guy won't leave me alone. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? But like, even though I don't <laughs> believe in this, like at all, cause come on, <laughs> it's like, it's like, like, come on. I'm like, they're not hurting anybody. They're just, you know, kind of believing some stuff that's obviously insane. It doesn't really bother me. But, uh, you know, it, I, w I was laughing, though. I was like, I had, I had no idea this stuff was, was popping. It had like 60,000 likes or something on Twitter. I was, I was confused. I know we gotta go faster, okay? You just you just trust me on this one. I'm doing my best. I'm trying. Someone help me break the spell. It's true. I, I there was and you're gonna laugh, but there was like uh, there was like a way to break the spell that they were talking about. It's like you know if you burn some of his pubic hair or something like. It's always got to be at like a specific time, right? It's always got to be at like at 12:33 p.m. on a Wednesday. If you light a candle and salt bay some of his pubic hair in it, the spell will be broken. And if he keeps calling you back, uh you just did it wrong. But as long as you're not I mean, I'm actually happy that that exists because it's kind of humorous. Um, and also, they're not hurting anybody. I, I, I know I use this anecdote a lot, but like, I, would, I took the baby out for a walk and there was like a guy my age walking in the other direction. And he had a graphic t-shirt on that said, Astrology is bullshit. And I'm like, man, I, I would much rather hang out with the witches, I think. I'd at least be some interesting conversation. Like I get, I'm. Don't get me wrong. I'm like I'm with you. I I also don't think that it's like you know science based. <laughs> but at the same time, are you like beset on all sides by like malevolent astrologers? Like I, I knew it was coming too. I knew it was coming. Like what what made you buy this shirt except like a feeling of having to feel superior to other people? Like yeah, no, everyone basically knows that man. Like you're not. You're not fooling anyone. I mean, we gotta go. I hate to do it. We gotta go. Rip item room. <clears throat> ah! Uh, no, we're fine. Uh, anybody, by the way, who doesn't know that is not gonna be convinced by your graphic t-shirt. is the other aspect that I think warrants some uh, analysis. But anyway. Well, I'll tell you, here's what I got for you, believers. I'm still trying. I'm gonna give it my all. There is some copium for boss rush. If you get Mama Mega, you can just make it happen. Hey, a full health pill. Um, but I'll tell you, it looks unlikely. This looks like the least satisfying type of uh, Isaac run, which is we may win, that's still up in the air, um, but the believers run a very low chance to be paid out here. Full health again, unidentified. Lots of full health though. Yikes. Hey, uh, don't, if you're thinking about killing me, my devil deal, that's bad. That's pretty bad for business. Okay. What if it's copium on the full moon, though? I'm just saying, okay? I'm like, the full moon is just, it's very funny. What what was more funny than anything else for me? Lockdown? Health up! What was more funny than anything else was the fact that so many people, uh, you know, we got another full health back there, so let's just do this. So many people knew um, what the heck this person was talking about. 
that they didn't even have to ask. It was only like people like me were popping into the comments being like, excuse me, I don't understand the punchline of the joke here. And then people were like, Sis is never gonna be rid of him. And I'm like, oh, it's a spell. You didn't know? No, I, yeah, I didn't know about all that blood bonding stuff. I did watch that Netflix heist show about um, the people who robbed the armored car and were using uh, sex magic spelled with a CK in order to uh, manifest that the robbery would go well. I thought that was, I haven't seen that in any of those uh, Robert De Niro movies. He, he's got a lot of movies about heists. S-E-C-K-S magic. No, no, no. S-E-X-M-I-M-A-G-I-C-K-S. Although that would be funny. You know, I read an article about all... You, you know how there's like all those absolutely awful like Bruce Willis, uh, Robert De Niro movies? Where they're in... The, John Cusack as well. Where they're like in the movie for seven to ten minutes. And it comes out direct on DVD. Or, uh, I guess, direct on uh, the video on demand services now. I read an article about it. Did you know that A, those movies are insanely profitable, mostly because they have an unbelievably low budget, uh, entirely or almost entirely spent on only the uh, sellable actor? Also, did you know, I was reading the story about they were making this movie uh, for, for one of those production companies, and Bruce Willie is in, like, all of them, man. I don't know why he's in every single one. I guess, you know, he's just making money, which is, is fair. Um, and to be honest, anybody that would go see a movie exclusively because it stars Bruce Willis probably, you know, deserves to have some money taken from them either way. Um, but there was a movie where, like, because of COVID, he was supposed to be on set for uh, two days or three days. I can't remember which, but COVID screwed it up. Um, now you would think like, hey, this, you know, like a act of God, like mutual indemnification clause or something like that. Nah, man, apparently it's baked into his contract uh, that no matter what, the if something goes like horribly wrong, the maximum that he will be on set for is uh, is one day. He'll still honor the one day criteria, but apart from that, he's like, well, I didn't cause the virus. A true thespian. So it, this, they were originally gonna uh, fit all of it, and the movie was gonna suck anyway, don't get me wrong, but they were originally gonna fit his scenes into two days, which I imagine would be uh, hard, but then instead he's like, guess what, you got one day to film uh, an entire movie where I'm like the main selling point. And then I'll just leave and uh, you guys can spend like the next six months finishing it, huh? That's that's crazy. Also, like again, I don't begrudge him. I'm just saying, <laughs> it's funny. Have you heard about the Expendables? He was offered $3 million for four days to shoot. He said no, his rate is four million, and Sylvester Stallone told him to F off and got Harrison Ford instead. Alright, so when I was gonna say you can't begrudge him, now I'm like, you can kind of begrudge him a little bit. Like, I, I thought maybe those were like the only roles he was being offered or something like that, but, you know, when you're in a position where like, you make $3 million for uh, four days of work and also, I assume, hang out on a project that would be a lot of fun, even if the movie ended up sucking because of the fact that it's not very good. At least you would, uh, you know, spend some time hanging out with other, you know, your peers, but... All right, Bruce Willis, I see you. I should have bought this first, for sure. I also like I in in it makes me mad, okay? It makes me mad. And by the way, believers, your only copium here is uh Mama Mega. I'm going to give it my all to find Mama Mega. But it makes me mad cuz like that's how you know that there's like that Bruce Willis is actually a great actor because in Bruce Willis movies, like when he's done comedies, I have looked at those and been like, man, Bruce Willis seems like an affable guy. 
And then when you hear stories like that, you're like, man, this guy's actually just a great actor. By acting as a character, he convinced me that he was cool when he actually kind of sucks. Yes, I will take. Have you seen any of his films in the past 20 years? Wait a minute, hold on. Okay, I saw Red. I honestly thought Red was like pretty overrated. And even though it's mostly like not well liked. <laughs> I thought it was... Hey, Looper's good. Looper's a, Looper's a pretty decent movie. I did see Live Free or Die Hard. I have absolutely no memory of it whatsoever. And oh, that's right, he's in Moonrise Kingdom. Which I haven't seen, but I've heard is extremely good. But come on, man, come on. Anyway, I mean, I don't really like, I know I said I don't begrudge him, but I really, I mean, I, I don't, here's the thing. I think if he wants to be in absolutely horrible, cynical movies where he works for two days and, you know, gets paid, uh, uh I need more bombs. We need the knife piece as well. Um, and he, you know, if he does that, then so be it, you know? But the fact that he's also saying no to stuff because he's, you know, he's gotten used to that sweet, sweet teat, that's a little crappy. I would like to think that either, like, I would do those, I, I don't think I would avoid doing the crappy movies, you know? I definitely don't see myself as being like a Daniel Day-Lewis type, where I would only do uh, great movies and then Lincoln for some reason. Um... I, but I would like to think that I'd be like, I'm trying to think of an actor who's, if I were in that position, which I'm not, I'm trying to think of an actor that I'd be more similar to. I think I would do a lot of garbage that paid well, given the choice. But then also, you know, for, for every cosmic sin that you're in, you gotta do, like, a, you gotta do an indie movie or something like, isn't that like the old Martin Scorsese quote? One for you, one for me. You know, he, he makes like a mafia movie and then he's like, I'm gonna make uh, a musical. Yeah, one for them, one for me. This That's the way I do it, you know? Like, uh, every, every other Isaac episode is for me and then the other episodes are for you. Can we talk about Steven Seagal? Seagal is also, they, they talked about how he was like kind of the prototype for uh, for this like John Cusack style of movie making where they literally just hire like a recognizable actor um, that's recognizable worldwide. And then, I th this sounds like rude, okay? But then they, the movie tends to make money, um, they call them geezer teasers now, but they, they tend to make money predominantly like in markets where maybe people aren't as snobby, to put it politely. Um, they, they aren't as concerned with a, a movie being good, necessarily, as with like being able to put Bruce Willis on the cover and have people all over the world be like, I think I know what I'm going to get with this. Um, but, okay, so apparently uh, Steven Seagal was one of, like, one of the archetypes for this, right? And... Uh, at one point, they were filming a movie, and he said, We have to stop. I have monks flying in from Tibet tonight. In order to, like, they're gonna be uh, oracles, essentially. And they're gonna perform a ceremony to see if it's okay for the production of the movie to continue. Uh, bombs? Bombs? If this gives us Mama Mega, I mean, this is the ultimate copium, but anyway, so he flew in like a troop of monks. I don't know if that's what a group of monks is called from, from Tibet. Um, and then they performed like an hour long ceremony at his uh, mansion. And then they whispered something in his ear and he said, all right, guys, like production can continue. <laughs> he, he just made everybody go through this like unbelievable self-serving ceremony and then <laughs> <laughs> it was totally fine, I guess, after all that. Um, that's low-key kind of sick, though. Yeah, it's a power move. No question about that. It's just, it's so <laughs> unnecessary. But that's how I know that they believe this stuff, man. 
That's that's how I know, because that, that's not something you do if you're just like, I'm just going to pretend to be like a little off kilter. Instead, he's like, I'm... He, he, he lives as he sees it. A, finally, a planetarium. Neptunus. It's pretty good, actually. Neptunus is not bad. Steven Seagal has a nine-part allegations and controversy section on his Wikipedia page. <laughs> Does it talk about the... Um, the time when he got choked out and crapped his pants, allegedly. Excuse me. Like the time you got choked out and crapped your pants? Excuse me. I did not crap my pants. <laughs> On that occasion. I... Did Malf choke me out? Yes. Have I crapped my pants? Yes. Did they happen as a causal relationship? No. Those were two events separated by a matter of days, okay? Not at the same time. Tell the poopy pants story? There is no... Look, I'm not saying I've never sharded in my life. Mouth saying I sharded at PAX is, uh, is libelous. Well, I guess it's, uh, slanderous. But, there was one time I had, uh, what I thought was Norwalk, but in hindsight definitely feels, I know this is hypocritical, but definitely feels like all the evidence actually points to it being foodborne illness from a sketchy Burger King in my hometown that's no longer in business. I... Did not crap my pants, but I easily could have. The truth comes out. I mean, this is like the 10th time I told this story. Like, the story could be funny, but it's annoying in reality. Because anytime I tell it, people are like, food poisoning's not real. And I'm like, yeah, I covered that the first time I talked about this bit. And every subsequent time I've talked about this story over the course of, like, the past 10 years. So, like, yeah. Like, it, there you go. You've deprived yourself of hearing an anecdote that maybe you've never heard before because of the fact that you, you want to go through the food poisoning is not real. You haven't even gone through the 17 other times we've been, like, food poisoning actually is real. It's just people that have never, like, consumed alcohol before in their lives have, like, 17 beers, and then they wake up, throw up, and have brown underpants and go, oh, the Taco Bell was a little off yesterday. Okay. What are we looking for? We're looking for Mama Mega. This helps. The kangaroo definitely isn't real. All I'm saying is I'm, I'm waiting to see. I'm simply waiting to see if the kangaroo is real. Hey, there's nothing wrong with waiting and seeing. I'm just gonna wait an indeterminate length of time. I haven't put uh, like a cap on how long I'm gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait until maybe Mm, 10 years from now, a piece of evidence finally comes out that I agree with, and then I'm gonna be like, see? Even if it comes from a site that's at like a dot biz slash gov dot us, plus, uh, you know, uh, hey, you gotta put in your credit card number to see it. I'm just, I'm just waiting and seeing for as long as possible. Just do your research on the kangaroo, that's all I'm saying. Hold on. We don't know what the card is. It's justice. I'll do it. This could be Mama Mega. This could be Mama Mega. Mausoleum 1. Plenty of time. I got ridden up at work once for telling my co-worker that kangaroos were poisonous. This is one of those things where I'm like, there's got to be more to this story. Like, did you get ridden up for telling your co-worker kangaroos are poisonous? Or did it lead to, like, a fight? And you're only talking to me about the genesis of the fight. You're not talking about the, you know, the way that you guys were, like, throwing fisticuffs in the parking lot afterwards. Because this is one of those things. I, I don't buy the story as presented. Don't take my knife! What the? Where? Whoa! 
More more information required. I told a new hire to get me a box of air from the attic. There is no attic. Delightfully devilish, Seymour. You're a peculiar man, Seymour, but you smoke a mean ham. Box of air? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you work at like a... I don't know, like underwater, so you gotta get some oxygen boxes. <laughs> I don't know, man. I gotta get a yum heart charge, that's all I know. <clears throat> what do you think about hazing culture? What do you think I think about hazing culture? Big fan! I love that shit. <laughs> when, when you try to get like into a fraternity or something and they make you like, you know, uh, cut off your own testicles, I think that's it's character building. Said no one ever. Were you ever hazed? No, not at all. Um, and I thought like that was normal, but I guess it, maybe part of it is just because like I didn't play professional sports. It seems like the people who played uh, organized sports in a competitive uh, environment growing up have all sorts of situations where they were like, yeah, I had to eat an entire jar of Vaseline in order to get onto my peewee hockey team. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? That's insane. Yeah, I was studying the blade at the time. The military's like that, too? Dude, I'm just gonna be honest, okay? This is gonna ruffle some people's feathers. I think being in the military, like, not you, but me, I think it would be, like, the funniest shit of all time. I actually don't think I could keep a straight face. Like, at 18, I think that I would have been like, Yes, sir, this is serious. But as, like, a 32-year-old, I think if I went to basic training and, like, some guy was like yelling at me. That's like, what are you doing? You gotta drop that again. I would just, I would not be able to handle it. I think I would just burst out laughing. I would be like, what are you talking about? You're like two years away from being an insurance salesman. And you're here yelling at me to like do three extra push-ups. Are you crazy? Like, what, what are your priorities like in life? This is madness. You're just like another dude like me. Why are you yelling so much, weirdo? I don't think I could handle it, man. I, I think they would discharge me. Or like, you know, for, I don't know, if they were like character building, you know, you, oh, by the way, time to die. Like, we're going to have you cleaning latrines for like 10 years. I'd be like, okay, this sounds, honestly, that sounds like character building to me. Can you promise that like, as I clean the latrines, you keep yelling at me? Because like, that's the only reason I'm here. That That's funny as hell, man. They, the military will break you down. I don't know, maybe. I got pretty strong opinions. I'm not saying I'm the toughest guy on the planet, like, that's obviously insane. But at the same time, like, I think if they started yelling at me, like, you know, why are you cracking a smile? I'd be like, because there's a grown man yelling at me. How am I not supposed to laugh? Like, what are you going to do? You're, you're yelling at me, you're not going to, you know, fight me because you get discharged. So why are you yelling so much? Why don't you just talk to me like an adult? I can't die to this guy, that's too much. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Shave my head? Crab my pants? One step ahead of you, dummy. I would like this chest, please. It's a wild bit. Jay, I don't know if it's like, you know, it's just different up here or something like that. I, I on I, I'm telling you that as a, a teenager, I think, I'm not saying I would have bought in, but I think if I went to basic training, I would be like, I'm gonna be a good little soldier for Mommy, mommy Canada. I almost said America. But now, I, I genuinely think that I, 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 even if I put an honest effort forward, I don't think I could not laugh. If a, if a grown man in the army started like yelling at me in my face, I'd be like, you know, yeah, I stopped running because my fucking lungs hurt, dude. What do you think? I think I'm... I'm an adult, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, <I'd> be... <laughs> I'm 
Sergeant, what was your GPA? Like, uh, what are you, Sergeant, what are your plans for when you leave this career? Like, I just, I gotta know. I think I, can I do this one? People really did not want me working at McDonald's for the, for the lulls. What if, could I, do you think it's possible Canada would let me join the military for like a week for videos? I think that would be, nobody's got a pro, well, wait, no, they would really have a problem with that. I promise I wouldn't glorify it. I think it, I, if anything, it might be an enormous national security issue, but. I had another tweet, by the way, speaking of McDonald's, but again, as is often the case, I didn't know how to phrase it. Um, the tweet would look something like this. I swear to God, McDonald's got the fastest credit card readers on earth. Something like that. I, anytime you go through the drive-thru, they hold the thing out on a, like a hockey stick. You tap your card, it goes beep. They don't even wait to see if it's approved or whatever. Or maybe it goes so fast, they're just like, move on ahead. Maybe they're pushing you through because, you know, they, they, the efficiency is worth more than like the order or whatever. But I don't know, man. Anyway, someone said you're a tow walker, right? They'd have a field day with that. I'm here to tell you, like, I'm actually... Um, immune to um, being made fun of literally I'm, I'm i'm so inoculated from being like bullied for any physical feature i think we have to keep yum heart man just because i like literally every every day chat youtube comments the way that he did can you believe that this guy didn't pick up the ammo that does he walks like a weirdo he shit his pants all the time you know i get it like literally like dad you can't you can't harm me with that you could harm me on like a spiritual level but i don't think that the i don't think they'd be able to dress me down like that i don't think they've read the the greek classics that you know serve as foundational in order to cut somebody deep to the core oh thank you um Let's get card reading, I guess. Yeah, have they read Beowulf? Pot play. What if they start talking about the pot play? You know what that would be? If he started yelling at me because of the pot play, I'd be like, oh, it's always nice to meet a fan. Ooh, he talked back to Sergeant, even though we're all the freaking same age here or whatever. Ooh, though we all occupy the same position in life, more or less. Ooh! You, but did, don't you see how many tassels he's got on his pauldrons? I don't think... I don't think I could handle it, man. I don't think I could handle it. What if they make you eat a paper plate? I think... Couldn't you just, like, sue the crap out of them? I think you could, man. If they, like, they make you eat a paper plate, that's not food. Like, what are they gonna do? I, I feel like it's, you know, it's like a, a, when you go to a haunted house, I feel like that's what basic training is like. Like, there, yeah, sure, there's like a, there's people that are, they're, they're there to scare you, but they can't actually, like, touch you. <laughs> Because then the haunted house would get shut down, and you'd never have to work a day in your life, right? So I think it's a... I don't think they can actually... They can touch... In the US military, they can... They can physically assault you? They can hit you? That's crazy, man. They really can't, they really can't. They used to be able to, but they can't anymore. I would like to speak with the US military ombudsman, Mr. Biden. I've got, I've, hey, Joe, you been hearing about this shit? I'm, I don't know if anybody else has heard of this stuff, but I'm starting to think the US military has done some questionable stuff. They're hitting their own recruits just for laughing in their face. Look, I, if you, it's very simple, okay? If you don't want me to laugh in your face, just don't yell at me. Talk to me like a normal person. And then it, there's nothing to worry about. 
I gotta leave, man. There's nothing here. Like, if they start yelling at me in my face and going, like, Yo, hey, like, you're really gonna, like, spit in my face because my jog wasn't fast enough? Then I'm gonna laugh because that shit, like, nothing is funnier than anger, okay? If you're like, hey, you didn't really bring your best to that run earlier today. You think you could step it up next time, cockroach? I'd be like, oh, man, I let the professor down. I, l I let my military teacher down. He's disappointed in me. If they started yelling in my face, I'd be like, is this like open mic? I don't get it. Y yeah, if he was like, do better next time, cockroach. <laughs> then I'd be like, oh man, I let him down. That's a sad story. I think we gotta get to full HP, man. I, I don't wanna fight the boss right away. By the way, the doubters, no matter what, will be paid out unless we find an R key. Um, and you know who you're dealing with here, and perhaps more importantly, you know who you're not dealing with. So I would say the R key is is not likely. I'll probably try to find a secret room, but... I feel like they would make everyone else hate you? I, I don't know. I, I, maybe? I'm not that worried about what a bunch of like 18-year-olds in basic training think about me. What are they gonna do? Put shaving cream in my socks? Like, I'll, just, I'll laugh about it. That shit's funny, too. It's just, like, if you don't see the humor, I think it's hard to explain. But an adult yelling at another adult in a situation like that is, is kind of funny. They might fart on your pillow. It's nothing worse than I've, I've done to myself. I'm, I'm waiting for placenta, man. <clears throat> Put meatballs down my pant leg? Oh, man. Hide my, ra hide my razors will be bad. On vacation, I didn't get to shave. And I had the... Uh, I could see... I caught the back of my head in a mirror, and I could see the Elliot Spitzer back there. And I was like, oh, man. And I got home, I was like, I have to shave immediately. Let's go! <laughs> now it's just for pride. Like, I gotta win this run. Can I tell you about some messed up stuff on vacation that I saw happening at, uh... At an ice cream store? I didn't think that... First off, okay, so we were in line for this ice cream store. It's a very popular store. It's called Cows. Uh, I don't know how they're legally able to stay in business because they do... Uh, one, one thing that they do is sell ice cream that's pretty delicious. But then the other thing that they do is sell merchandise that is all rip-offs of, like, registered trademarks, but with cows-based puns. So, for example... Um, you know the outdoor supply store called Catalonia? What if you took their uh, logo and then put it on a shirt, but with a cow instead of like the actual horizon, and then sold it as Catalonia? What if you took a Louis Vuitton logo and then um, changed a letter so it was Mui Vuitton? What if you... And, and this is how I could tell they were on the up and up. Sorry, Patagonia as Catalonia. My mistake. My mistake. What if um, you took the imposter among us, put it on a shirt, and then just wrote the words among us? Because that's the sound a cow makes. So anyway, that's their whole thing, right? But the the ice cream's delicious. So we got in line. You know, there's like... Uh, we're going to die. There's literally like 50 people in line. It's one of the most popular eateries in the whole city. I thought, I thought so. Um, the people in front of us were like losing their mind. There's a little, before you get in line, there's a little like menu board so you can choose what you're gonna select to eat um, before you get in line, just to speed things up. They didn't choose, they got in line. Then they were like, I, I couldn't really hear what they were saying, but they were like, should we get the mooey gooey? Or should we get the, you know, they're all like bovine based puns, right? Should we get, you know, 
heifer rum raisin. Should we get blah blah? And they they were going they were talking about it for like forty five minutes. Uh, well, uh, it's probably like 20. That's a bit of an exaggeration. Sorry, teacher. I didn't mean to disappoint you. Um, and I'm like, I, I feel like I don't want to be rude, but I'm like, it's just ice cream. It's like 95% the same ingredients. Like one of them has chocolate. One of them has, you know, like pralines. Like it's not that big of a deal. But they just, they, they were like, I can't decide. Then they got up there. And this is where, again, you're like, we, we move from judgmental to based very quickly. We got up to the front. They got a cup. They got two scoops. They said, give me two scoops of mooey gooey. 17 year old behind the counter, takes a scoop of mooey gooey, puts it in the cup, takes a second scoop of mooey gooey, puts it in the cup. And then she says, actually, I've decided I don't want that scoop. Give me a scoop of the bovine rum raisin instead. So she made the ser the server looked like, like, really, you're going to do this? And then she like pointed like that one. And then she took the scoop that she had put in the cup and then put it back into the ice cream container and then gave her a scoop of something else. And she was on her phone the whole damn time. I was, Kate and I were losing it. Such bad behavior, man. Did you kill her dead? No, I was just I'm just talking about her now, making fun of her. But um, I don't know. Like Kate and I were talking about it. Like I, there's a certain like demographic out there. You you may call them Karens, but like I, I don't know if I feel comfortable going that far because I think it's it's not just like a a, a man or a woman thing. I I just and again I, I apologize. This is generational warfare. But, like, why are such a high percentage of boomers relative to other generations? Why do they go into customer service engagements with a chip on their shoulder? Like, like they're trying to, like, beat the restaurant or something like that. Like, I have to find the abs- what's the best flavor? Do you have, like, a secret flavor in the back nobody else gets access to? Um, you, like, they're always going out either thinking that they're, like, about to be ripped off. And you're like, yeah, of course you are. You're paying 10 bucks for two scoops of ice cream. That's, you know, pardon. Oh, you got me. Oh, nine lives. That's that's part and parcel with like the whole thing, right? But I just I just don't know why you go into it on operating under the assumption that like, you know, they're trying to rip you off. It's like the casino thing. Like you're already paying more than you would pay if you got it yourself. The rip off freak you. <laughs> Is, is built into the the actual service to begin with. All you gotta do now is not be a jerk about it. Well, this one, this one's looking a little spicy. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't use the bomb until the ends. I love how it gives us Curse of the, or the Whore of Babylon, just to make sure it's like, hey, if you had half a spirit art, this would all be for not. Bro, you have to you, you spawn enemies, you shoot a little like beam out of your arm. You do this, don't even get me started on this freaking attack. It's impossible to dodge. I don't know why you're hitting me with a not like this is a better. Like as a if you're a if you're a believer, you were screwed anyway. <laughs> Sin EV. Sin EV. This is what's known as a spiral. Nice shot. Sin EV. Don't worry, that was just a... That was just a play to get Neptunus out there. Now we got Neptunus fully charged. Hmm. Maybe I'm stupid. But I believe that I can make it through this. Now, I'm, I don't see a world where we defeat Ubermom. But I definitely don't think it's impossible to beat this guy on 1 HP. Ooh! <laughs> we were in there, we were in there. Uh, that's, that's my bad, I only had 1.7 speed. That's not enough to make it happen here. <laughs> we put shots in the middle of the only place that you can dodge in. Pish! 
pay out the doubters. That's a big win for the doubters. Oh man, that run it was a disaster. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I just don't know why. Like, I, there, there, I really do notice like a like a generational difference. And I'm not saying like. Um, you know, all people over the age of, like, 45 are bad customers, because I don't think that's true at all. But I am, you know, I and, and I'm also not saying anybody under the age of, like, 25 is a good customer, for the record. However, I am, like, uh, I feel like when I see someone in public being rude to uh, service staff, they're usually either a wannabe influencer, in which case I just say, shut the fuck up, I got more followers than you, dummy. Or they're just the person over the age of 50 that thinks that the restaurant is trying to like cheat them by charging like 30 bucks for two bucks worth of food and i'm like yeah that's called the food service industry idiot 